Welcome to another episode of Destination Linux Podcast. Hi, I'm Rob. And I'm Rocco. And this is episode 26 of Destination Linux. Good morning, Rob. What's going on? Hello, Rocco. Episode 26. I, you know, when we talked about this, I never dreamed we'd be at 26. It's like, bam, it's here. It's, uh, it's time, really... Uh, time yeah, flies when you're having fun, man. <laughs> time flies. How are things going? Things are going excellent. Rob, I seen an article on OMG Ubuntu that might interest you. And the title is, Are You a Distro Hopper? Distro Hopper? What does that mean, Rocco? I don't understand that. That's a strange question. Well, I think we embody the Distro Hopper thing. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, considering we came up with Distro Hoppers Anonymous, I'd say yes. We are both Distro Hoppers for sure. Yep. Co-founders. So, so what's of the article? DHA. What's the? Yeah. <laughs> so what's the article? Uh, what are they discussing there? Just just asking the question, or? Well, I mean, there's a poll at the bottom, but it basically goes through um, talking about you know where you start out and how you switch even one distro. And what's the best way to do it? Do you do it in VirtualBox? Do you do it on hardware? And, you know, I don't know. Are you a big VirtualBox fan? I've used it from time to time, but I would prefer to just do the install. I like I like doing the actual install and getting things, going through the setup process and all of that. So, Well, let me say that I, you know, it's way easier to use VirtualBox. Much, okay, yes. To test things out. But... I just never like doing any kind of video or review or anything on VirtualBox because it there are certain aspects of the distro that you're testing out that may not come through on a VirtualBox. You know, whether right. it reacts well with your hardware. Uh, I've had things run great in a VirtualBox, and then I go to install them, and then they just, it ain't happening. So right. uh, I'm not a big VirtualBox fan. But um, so... What's your latest distro hop, Rob? Oh, gosh. Uh, I've had, well, I've had quite a few. So I've got separate partitions and everything set up, and then I've got a test machine. So right now, um, I've got Linux Mint still on there. I've got, and that's Linux Mint proper. Um, well, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, wasn't going to bring this up, but uh, I've actually got a Mac Mini that I purchased used uh, just to kind of play around with. Wow. And, and so was running Snow Leopard the other day. I had that all connected. That's awesome. Just to, you know, I've never been well versed in Mac and thought, well, I'll, and, and it was one of those things through Matt, I was able to get a, a decent deal on it. And uh, anyway, so that, and now I'm running uh, also, uh, well, this is going to come to no surprise to you, but Intergos with KDE, the latest KDE on it. That's a shock that you would run Intergos. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I've got to reinstall um, Arch Labs. I'm going to put that back on, uh, probably on the uh, test machine, right? Because uh, I want to spend more time with OpenBox and get more verse there. Uh, but I have really been torn lately because, like with XFC, well, let me back up. With so much going on with the GNOME or GNOME desktop, I mean. You know, you get pulled. You're like, okay, let me run that. You know how it is, Rocco. I mean, it's like an ongoing thing. Man. Well, it's like you want to you want to see what's going on in the mainstream. So, you know, there for a while, KD was like, well, there for a while. KD is always in the mainstream with something. So right. you want to test out the new features. You want to test out the new things that they're coming up with. But GNOME has been coming up with all, well, not necessarily GNOME, but the community itself has been coming up with a lot of things for GNOME that... Mm -hmm. It's just a it's just a buzz right now. It really is. So, well, with that, what are you rocking right now? Well, I am still on my count at third week, I think it is now, on my uh, same install of Unity with uh, GNOME alongside and Cinnamon alongside. So, but I've been mostly running GNOME. So, well, let's hear it then. This is this is the way it goes, Rocco. Mm. And so it's, it'd be like, hi, my name is Rocco. I've been three weeks now without a distro hop. <laughs> I appreciate the support of my fellow distro hoppers. The the hotline has definitely helped. I'm I'm sure I'll be installing something soon. 
Um, but going back to this poll, there is a poll at the bottom of this OMG Ubuntu article. And it's, well, some of the votes, well, let's put it this way. We're recording this on Friday. But right now, the votes that they have are no, I love my distro, at 40%. Um, yes, but not that often, at 27.8%. Yes, whenever I get bored, 23.5%. And that would include me. I uh, I voted for yes whenever I get bored. That's why I haven't switched yet, Rob, because I'm not bored yet. Wow. And yes, when new releases come out. So I guess that would be the Extreme Distro Hopper, and that's at 7.2%. So I guess, I don't know, it's saying that there's not a lot of Distro Hoppers out there? Well, uh, so I, I think I would classify myself probably in the Extreme 7%. At yes, and whenever I think the new release in, comes out. <laughs> <laughs> but not as much lately. And I would say maybe a month or so ago, you could have been in that 7%. I, I was in that 7% a month ago. And yeah. I've just been like chugging along with what I have. And I don't know. I have no... See, I have no reason to switch. I am cured. <laughs> <laughs> so... So I would say, I don't know, maybe at least half of our listeners probably have been in the 7% at some point. I would say there's a lot of listeners out there that have made comments on the videos or made comments for your emails talking about hopping through distros. And, man, you look at the Telegram group, and them guys oh, are yeah. always yeah. installing something. <laughs> That's right. That is true. Yeah, that is true. So let's back up to the other number, uh, Rocco. Uh, so the, um, what, what was it? Yes. 23%? Yes. Whenever I get bored is myself, uh, 23.5%. Okay. Okay. And, and that's part of the, and I guess I'm going to say, I'm going to give the reason that I haven't switched because I haven't got bored because the activity that GNOME has right now, there's yeah. so much going on and so many new extensions coming out that, you know, it isn't boring. And, oh, man, there's another good extension. Oh, my gosh, there's another good extension. And it just keeps happening day after day. So it's like I'm not bored right now. Well, let's talk about that. That's part of our news lineup anyway is what's going on with Norman. And before we kind of dig into some of the details of those extensions, I have to think that a lot of why we're seeing this kind of activity now is with the big news that Ubuntu is moving over to the GNOME desktop as opposed to Unity, of course. That's old news. But ever since that announcement, it seems like the momentum for the GNOME slash GNOME desktop has been, uh, it's, you know, it's, there's been a lot more activity there. There's been a ton of activity in the community itself. And I'm sure behind the scenes, there's a lot of activity with Ubuntu and the devs and putting things together because they got to get it ready. Um, but I haven't seen any major uh, deals on like the news on like the 1710 builds yet. But like I said, it's the community itself with the extensions that are driving that that activity. And there's just there's just so much right now. And GNOME Tweet well, Tool and is leading the way. Yes, it is. And well, if we were developers for extensions, we would want to do everything we could to prep and make sure that we've got everything running smoothly. And, and you know, if we've got any ideas about adding things on to the extension, what better time to do that than when you get the official release? Well, they're going to get you know, so much more it. exposure. That's right. You know, now, you know, if you've ever made an extension for GNOME, uh, you're going to get so much more exposure from Ubuntu or Canonical using it. So, Rocco, uh, what extensions are you running that are in the news right now? So, for example, there's cascading menus. Have you got that set up? I did install that. And that's something that, you know, it may not appeal to every user out there. And it's really not, like, uh, extremely useful but it's useful in the area of if you like things to be organized and clean. Uh, and what it does is it puts a little button up at the top of your uh, tray. And you click it and it'll cascade every window within probably, I don't know, like a half inch apart. All the way across your screen diagonally. And like I said, it's not super useful. You're not going to use this all day long. But 
it's nice. Uh, as actually, uh, Joey from OMG Ubuntu made a statement that it's nice for screenshots, and it's also nice if you're like me that you like everything in a neat order, like when you go look at things. So, if you're like that, you may find that useful. Yeah. Yeah. I like when they show the screenshots of stuff like that. It's like they have 30 windows open. It looks so <laughs> sleek, doesn't it? <laughs> That's right. It's like, wow, I, I want to launch 30 windows just because I can do this now. So. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so what else uh, is in the news there on the GNOME side that you've got set up? Because currently I'm not running a GNOME desktop. Well, GNOME Tweak Tool now lets you move the GNOME application menu out of the top bar if that's what you want to do. And this is what it's all about. I mean, doing it the way you want to do it. Of, of course, Canonical is going to make uh, GNOME be a, I, I don't know how you would say it, like a complete across the board, this is the way we do it. But the extensions right. themselves allow you to customize it to, and, you know, I'm not saying it's getting, it's it's KDE, but it's getting to the point where you can pretty much make it whatever you want it to look like. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, the extensions, and we've had this discussion numerous times. Without the extensions, <laughs> yep. just it wouldn't be what it is. Well, yeah. I kind of like am a halfway in between on the menu, uh, the application menu. I just, you know, like sometimes it's okay, and sometimes it's it's just takes up extra room that I don't really use, and it depends on, you know, I guess how bored I am with it, but. Right. Um, it does allow you to remove the application uh, menu, which is the basically the name of your application that's up top and the menu that it gives you to quit it and all that. Quit it? Quit it? <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> remove it. <laughs> End it. So last weekend, in about a three-hour period, mm -hmm. I did three installs. Okay. So uh, all with Interagus. Yep. Um, I set up XFCE desktop, got it all, spent the time to get that all set up the way I would want to use it day in and day out. Right. Okay. Maybe it was an hour and a half. I, I would say hour to hour and a half. Okay. Got that. And I thought, I'm going to do a little experiment here. I almost was going to film this and kind of do a video on this. Then immediately switched and moved over to the GNOME desktop with a fresh install. Now, I could have installed GNOME yeah. and gone in and set it up, but I wanted to do it from the fresh install perspective. Right. Did that, went in, set up my extensions, got it just the way that I would use it, Rocco, and kind of mentally thought about the time it took to get the extensions and everything set up and in place and get it the way I'd want to use it. And then lastly, went with KDE and set that up the way I would use it. And? And guess which one, for me, had the quickest setup by far? Gnome. Nope. Nope. Which I know one? you'd think that. Which one? It was KDE. You're kidding. No, it was KDE because, all right, so with, um, with XFCE, you got to install the Whisker menu, there are several things theme-wise that I just I cannot just go with the default XFCE theming because, <laughs> well, you don't want to go with 1999, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so there's a lot of tweaking and things that I just found that I would do with XFCE, but I absolutely once you get it there, absolutely love it. Absolutely yeah. love it. Then with GNOME, you've got several extensions that you're putting in place, right? Well, I should have thought about that beforehand because yeah, you can't use GNOME. Uh, Correct. You got to have the extension. So, yeah. Right. If right. I would have so, thought that through, I would have thought a little bit better. <laughs> but with KDE, it's really, <laughs> with KDE, it's really, I changed the application menu. Yeah. And, and maybe I add a few icons to the panel, you know, and that's it. Now, the theming stuff like that, I don't have to do with KDE. I think it's a beautiful desktop just right out of the box well the the breeze theme out of the box is a beautiful theme yeah. so yeah you don't if you're not into changing themes around you get a beautiful de theme by default so right yeah you don't really need to do a whole lot now for me i i move like the panel up to the top because that's what i'm used to that kind of thing so it would be a little bit more set up for katie but not much yeah 
because you don't have to set up all the extensions in KDE or not extensions. They don't have extensions, but you don't have to go through and change a lot of things because it's already customized the right way. So, right, right. Well, Rocco, there's some other news, of course, it's pretty big news, which is that uh, Debian has released a new version. And you and I have had a little bit of discussion there. We've never just run Debian proper. I have never installed Debian, never tried to, never tried to install it. Um, I know that it's a, uh, sometimes the install process can be a little bit detailed or at least the install process and getting your programs that you want installed. But I've right. never actually done it myself, so I can't speak to that. But Debian 9 Stretch was released. so That's right. Well, and we won't go through all the details because I'm sure everyone who's listening to this who has any interest in Debian 9 right now, they probably are already more versed than we are on it. But I did read through a few forums, and I, I thought maybe it was worth mentioning that um, in reading through some of the forums, it seems like maybe there are some installation issues. Um, and I don't want to, I don't want to make like, I'm not trying to make headlines or anything, but just reading through the forums, it sounds like um, that might be something that they're actually taking a look at. So if you haven't tried to download and install yet, uh, just kind of read through that and maybe save yourself a little time and a little aggravation if there were problems at launch. Yep. It's always yeah. good to uh, get some help because, yeah, it's not a, I don't, okay, I don't know but firsthand, but everybody that I've right. talked to, it's not a simple process to install, so. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. And I got a question for you, man. Uh, are you using or do you use um, word processing, that kind of thing, or do you just kind of do stuff in the cloud, you know, through Google Docs or whatever? Um I'm going to say most of the stuff that I, like, would do uh, as far as creating documents or, you know, done in the cloud, but I always have some type of office product on the computer to open up documents. So is that typically LibreOffice? It's usually LibreOffice. Yeah. Well, I've, you, you know, I've talked about WPS quite a bit and, you know, we had some news where they were dropping support for Linux or yep. going to end the project. And then all of a sudden big news that they're back. And then there, there was an update uh, however, if you went to the link to get the updated version, it, it was still the old version, but then now they made a release with some bug fixes supposed to be faster. But when you go back, it still shows as alpha. And this is one of those things where I know this isn't the first time there's been confusion in what's released and what version is it? And, and is it actually going to be ongoing? But it was enough for me to say, you know what? <laughs> it's just. I don't want to put my support and my time into an application that's going to be wishy-washy all over the place. Very similar to a mail client that's also in the news, Rocco. Yes, Rob, the promising Nihilus mail. Where's our taps music? Yeah. <laughs> is dead. It's totally dead. They have decided to switch directions again. And... You know, like this is where you go from a promising company to pretty much nothing. When you continually change your direction and, oh, we're going to do this. Oh, no, we're not going to do yeah. that. You know, we're going to do this. Oh, no, something different now. Just it's disheartening because um, people are relying on you to go with what you said, do do mm -hmm. what you said. And they had originally came out and said they were going to make a Linux client and it was going to be a, a nice modern looking email client. And their pricing was like ridiculously high. And now oh, it was, I mean, <laughs> t tell me it, it was, was ridiculously high. <laughs> it was for millionaires. <laughs> it wasn't for everyday users. I can tell you that. Yeah. And, and now they are going to not continue the, uh, mail client. Well, I've installed it, used it when they had their new release of just Nihilus Mail. It was no longer in one. And, you know, you could set up one account. Right. And just there was, well, first of all, it, it was it was very nice. I mean, it looked modern. Um, you know, it's what it claimed to be. But from the aspect of uh, knowing how to, say, move up to the next version, if you will, or the next level, 
uh, for added features, you go to their website and it's like, really, I'm going to go from free to $7,000 a month. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> this awesome. is a terrific business. This is a terrific business model. You know, it just seems like it was doomed to fail because of their, of course it wasn't $7,000 a month, but it was in the hundreds. Yes. And, and that, that's just like, you're setting yourself up for failure. And I was very confused by that. You know, I don't understand where the uh, business model was as far as where their thought process was. If they obviously knew they were going to charge these prices when they came out with it. I mean, yeah. you can't, you, I mean, I don't, I don't understand how you could be disillusioned that people would actually pay for something like that. I mean, at some point you got to know that most 99.9% .9 of the people out there are not going to pay for something like this. No. And, and I mean, there are so many alternatives today. Um, I mean, you could get say office 365 for, I think it's like $9 a month and have access online to the full office suite and outlook online and whatever else you would use there in that package it's a fraction of the cost of what they were charging for, for an email client. Yes. But even, um, even going so far as like the going down to like normal everyday users, most users don't need a lot from their email. Okay. So, right. you know, most people are using free email, either Gmail or some other type of service free. So for even yeah. to pay a little bit is a stretch for most people because most people are okay with the free email web-based services. So right. to to charge any kind of money at all for email is a stretch. So it better be awesome. But to charge that amount of money is I, I don't know where the thought process was there. Well, that's and I've said this before. For me, that's something that we're missing in the GNU Linux realm is a really nice Outlook alternative. And I've said it before. I'm a fan of of outlook i think microsoft did a great job for that for for my business case use and i would love yeah you've got evolution you know we've talked about all this before i'm looking forward to cube i think cube is going to be very exciting on the kde side of things but you know i really was interested in nihilus and what they were doing and how they were going to pull it all together and i thought hey hopefully this is going to be a, a good solution and in, in the end it's just kind of a disappointment really um, it was a being, big disappointment, man. Yeah. Wishy washy on how they were going to do what they were going to do. And, you know, when they announced it, it came out on windows first and then Linux took forever. And then, you know, then you see the pricing and anyway, beating a dead horse, but so it's definitely, uh, it was definitely a big disappointment. There's no question about it. Just yeah. the way they went about it. And the bigger disappointment was that it was a decent mail client. It was, and it, you know, it's not yeah. going to be there now. So I guess they're going to uh, work on the API for yeah. the mail, but it's not going to go anywhere for themselves anyway. Yeah. Yep. All right, Rob. Well, we have an interview coming up. Yes, we do. Who do we got? Eric Dubois. And many of you who follow in the Linux communities, you'll know Eric from uh, Arch Labs. Uh, he's got a YouTube channel to... Uh, you're kind of digging into Arch Labs, but other things tech. Um, you'll also know him from the Stardy icon set. So he was involved there with that. It, it's a beautiful icon set. Uh, uh, so we look forward to talking to Eric about what's going on there with Arch Labs and anything else that he's got going on with his uh, channel. Very nice. Very nice. Well, before we get to the interview, I want to thank our Patreon supporters, and direct everybody to the website destinationlinux.org if you it has all the links that you need for the shows the video the audio uh, the email if you want to send us an email or send us any questions comments at destinationlinux.org and the telegram group great bunch of people always busy always talking about something yep and yep. that is destinationlinux.org forward slash telegram all right. Well, let's move over and say hello to Eric. All right. Let's do it. All right. We have with us Eric Dubois. Welcome, Eric. Thank you. How's it going today, Welcome. man? Okay. Working for Arch Labs, of course. Very nice. <laughs> well, before we get into Arch Labs, um, where and when 
did you start in Linux? Well, um, I was thinking, well, you took me down to memory lane. I'm thinking, when did I start with computing at all? About uh, when I was 16, I was in, in Canterbury and we had these stores there with uh, appliance, appliances, that's the word, yes. tools and, and stuff, supermarket kind of thing. And there they were, the Sinclair, the Spectrum, you remember them? Those computers, home com first home computers. Yep. And that's where my interest in computers started, actually. And then we went on to the ZX Spectrum, Atari 1040 ST, I think it was the name. Uh, so it evolved and into clone PCs, I think the name was, with these large floppies, five and a quarter and all that. Yep, <laughs> yep. Great green screens, uh, emperor <laughs> color, just a dot right there on the screen, and then you have to type everything. Two floppies, A and B, whoa. Yeah. So that's what how we we, we rolled and where we started and then Windows 3.1 and all that. But when did Linux start? I really can't tell anymore. But I believe I believe it started somewhere around Red Hat 6 or something of that. That's a okay. version, I believe. So um, yeah, it was um, I, I started teaching Linux at uh, a high school in, in Yale, which is a Catholic Holy School camp at, at Yale. So I'm a teacher. Well, not all of the time uh, I've, I've worked in the well, in companies, but at some point in my life, I, I told, OK, I want to teach. And that's one of the things I, I, I taught it was Linux, basic Linux usage, uh, making users, you know, that user ads and stuff like that. So that's how we, I suppose, I started. But back then, we did not have internet, forums, and so on. So what did we do? We went to a shop, and we bought this nice, beautiful cover with CDs and books. Yep. And I remember Suze. Yeah? Yep. Oh, it was, yes. It was a beautiful box. It was, wow, amazing. And you got four DVDs filled with all freebies, free software. And it was fun to install and fun to have. But you had to figure it out back then. You had to, well, you were alone on your computer and, well, there yeah. you have it. This is the manual, does read me, go do it. So the world has changed, luckily, maybe. <laughs> so we have more information now on the net. Yeah. And everything so seems to gotten easier too. Yes, so <laughs> much easier. Sometimes, huh? there will always be puzzles in informatics. <laughs> Why so back back this? at <laughs> back at that time, Eric, like you said, yeah. you you got everything on a uh, CD basically, and if you had a question, you couldn't just type in a search and get you know five hundred mm -hmm. answers at your fingertips. It was a long process then. It was um, the time I, of Netscape, remember? Netscape yeah, and all that? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I remember hours <laughs> just getting the Wi-Fi drivers to work. You know, just oh, to yeah. get your. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So now you've got a YouTube channel, Eric, and uh, tell us a little bit about that and kind of what you discuss and, and what you do on your channel. Well, um, one of my mottos of the motto in my life is living to learn and learning to live. So rather than protecting my knowledge, I want to share my knowledge. And at some point in time, I discovered YouTube and said, oh, well, it's nice. And also in my profession, of course, I can use it to teach. Right? Mm -hmm. And um, you, you get these questions a thousand times over. And then I said, no, nope, I've made a movie. <laughs> Go check the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I've answered that already. You know, So that's uh, the advantage. Yeah. So what's on there? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm versatile, let's say. So meaning Windows is for, for school, Mac is for hobby, uh, and Linux is for hobby. And, and in the meantime, also a little bit for, for school as well. So I'm teaching a little bit of Linux at the, at the school at this point in time. So it's versatile, all operating systems, I would say. And then there's the, the Saturday and the surfing icons. And, and I guess it, that summarizes more or less what's on there, but do check it out. Well, it's a natural progression, I guess, with your teaching 
and, yeah. and your urge to teach, that's just a way to reach out to the community. And, you know, that's the thing about GNU Linux. It's, uh, you know, it's universal. It's everywhere. Yeah. And, you know, uh, people all around the world are discovering it every day. And so to have resources there to you share your knowledge. And I'm fascinated, too, that that you are able to teach that in the schools. And, you know, I don't recall any of the schools in my area <laughs> teaching anything about Linux, you know, growing up. Yeah. So yeah. Or YouTube movies. Yeah, well, of course, yeah. So, yeah. but to have that there and to share that knowledge is great. Yeah. And uh, I've gone there to, as I first took my first dive into Arch Labs. And so I found myself on your channel because I wasn't that familiar with OpenBox. And nope. so immediately you had lots going on there with OpenBox, but I want to back up to that. So of course we wanted to talk with you obviously about Arch Labs mm -hmm. and, uh, and what's going on there. Well, um, what do you want to know? The, the future? Because there's an interesting future coming on. We, well, we definitely past. want to know about that. I'd love <laughs> to know uh, who, who's involved on the development side. Well, um, that depends on what point in time you look at it. But at this point in time, there is Matt Dobson and there is me. And uh, Brett Stevens has just uh, left us in the group. So that's basically uh, the two of us and uh, three beta testers, we call them. So people who assist us to figure out and to sculpt Arch Labs. So two people, actually. So At what made you start Arch Labs? I, um, I had written at that point in time, if you check my website, I had written Arch Linux, how to install Arch Linux. And I start with the base tutorial and then move on to articles, how to install uh, Cinnamon on it, how to install XFC on it. So that everybody can use Arch Linux and, and follow my steps. It's not that difficult once you get to know uh, what to do. And I've always resisted sharing this knowledge, but at, the, at some point in time I said, what the heck, uh, I'll probably get uh, comments for doing so from the community. But uh, anyway, I'm going to share the knowledge. It's I have it. It's, I think, two years, three years old, the, this Arch Linux knowledge. And that resulted actually in, well, having this knowledge from Arch Linux, I saw Arch Labs passing by. It was about uh, December this year. No, no, it was too early. January, February, 28 February, around that time, I saw that's a gem. That's a diamond in the rough. That's what I recognized. I followed it. And then I did something very stupid. <laughs> <laughs> then I commented on the forum, guys, this is awesome, but... And then I posted everything that was wrong. Uh, this oh. menu does not work. You should do this, you should do that, you should do that. <laughs> and three weeks ago, I had to solve everything of my own posts. Solved, <laughs> solved, <laughs> solved. I said, oh no, Matt, that was not uh, smart. <laughs> so so some point in time, I discovered it. And I said, wow, this has potential. And then the passion flared up and then voila. Very That's nice. Goes. I think that um, that in in talking with other developers, I think that there is uh, something there that you know it's a combination. It sounds like just hearing you talk about it. It's 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 partly passion. It's mm -hmm. partly uh, as you said, wanting to learn, and then then there's sharing all involved there. So well, you know, I think it's uh it's a great thing. That's what keeps it so interesting for all of us. Yeah. Well, I think True. that's what's great about the community itself is sharing. And you, I've been noticing in the community all over the place, uh, there's been a lot more, um, I don't know, want to say openness or friendliness, but there's been a lot more community things going on where when I first started in Linux, um, it, was, it wasn't quite as friendly as it is now. And I think the more people that use it, the, the more uh, different personalities you get in it. I think it's been a good thing for Linux overall that, <clears throat> excuse me, that the uh, community has grown. Yeah. 
True. Eric, what um, from the desktop standpoint, uh, what was what was the reasoning behind just open box? And and I and forgive me if there's other options there, but you know, when I installed it, there was open box and mm-hmm. it was new to me. And so there's yep. part of that is fun and, and exciting because you're learning how things work. Uh, True. I think and then the other ben- benefit I would say definitely that you see first is the speed. Yeah. Uh, you cool, know, isn't it? It is so fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's how I like it. <laughs> fast and furious. <laughs> right. Yeah. This open box story was, was also a challenge for me, I must be honest. Um, so when you go to the website from, from me, Eric Dubois, then there is this Arch Linux part. But before that, there was also an Antarctic part, which is also Arch, which right. also has open box. Right. You see? Yep, so right. it's it's an um, it's has been a, a step, it has been a gradual way finding my way around. Arch in general, eh, because there's Manjaro as well. And I did discover Openbox and I wanted to install Arch, my own Arch base, and then Openbox. So I knew already that Openbox was fast. I knew already that, that it was cool, that it was challenging. Yes, it is challenging. It's not a menu down in the left button where you click on a menu. Wow, I have a menu. No. It's right, mouse click. Okay, now you know it, you know it. But it's it's, it's challenging because it's new, and that's why probably it, it attracted my attention as well. Then I said, I want to learn this. I want to master this. And that's me all over. I want to learn. Yeah, makes sense. Well, I experienced Openbox the first time with uh, through uh, OB Revenge. I'm sure you're familiar with Jody James. Yes, we in, must. In that distribution. Uh, can I thank him right away? <laughs> because oh, absolutely. He started with the ISO. It's his ISO that uh, Mats and Brett said, okay, that's, it would be a good idea to make Arch Labs. And then there was Jody and say, here you have my Arch ISO. Go ahead, guys. So we owe our thanks to him for that. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's the kind uh, of guy Jody, he is. He's a great guy. Yeah. yeah. Great guy. Well, he's expanded, you know, into other desktop environments. Is that something that you have thought about? I guess we could talk a little <laughs> bit about the future here. You talked about earlier. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe there's some news you want to share there. Mm-hmm. There might be some awesome <laughs> news. <Might be. laughs> well, you can keep us in suspense and hold it to the last, or we can. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's quite important, actually. So maybe we tell them to ra- right now. Well, the strangest thing is, well, before all this open box and all that, I was already a user of, here it comes, i3WM. Yep. Oh, okay. I have been using it for years. It has been stable. It has been there for two years on my SSD. Never had any problem with it, ever. And um, well, again, sorry for my telling, but if you go to the website, <laughs> okay, there is this menu i3, and I take i3 to Ubuntu, I take i3 to Linux Mint, I take i3 to Antergos, I take i3 to Arch, even to Solus. Oh, so it wow. works everywhere. I said, whoa, that's awesome. I can just take my config with me and everything works. So guys, R2, D2 will have i3 WM on board. Nice. <laughs> nice. Very good. I know a few very people good. in the Telegram group that will be very excited about that because, you know, i3 isn't like mainstream as far as everybody using it, but, no. they're, but the people that use it love it. They love it. Huh? But it's, it's hard. I remember taking it. I say, my God, what now? But then there was no config. There was a standard config, you know. If you've seen it, it's a black screen. eh? And I gave up. I gave up. Months later, took it back and I said, I'm going to retry, I'm going to retry. And I'm glad I I kept trying because that's also part of my character. I have a little bit of a pit bull mentality. I said, I want to learn it. I want (laughs) to master it. So... I mastered i3, and now it is just goes on on my travels on other distros. Yeah, that's interesting. See, you piqued my interest there because <laughs> the ability to just 
uh, mm -hmm. hop from distro to distro and just yep. put that in is intriguing. Just the other day, I was telling Rocco, uh, well, earlier in the segment, I was telling Rocco that uh, on a Saturday, I just decided to install uh, with Intergos uh, in about an hour and a half period, XFCE, GNOME, and then KDE. And just kind of, I went in, quickly set them up, then mm -hmm. would wipe it, reinstall. And the one thing I thought about was, you know, they don't offer um, the uh, budgie desktop. Yeah, true. You know, um, but to be able to take, as you just said, and just whatever distro you're on, implement mm -hmm. the desktop is intriguing. Oh, it's, it's strange. I was surprised that Linux Mint and everything just worked out of the box. Uh, well, some name changes, maybe packages other named differently, but actually pff, no challenge. How long has that been around? As a, as a desktop Good question, we should Google it. I3W. Yeah. <laughs> 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 there's, there's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. All right. So, who is the target audience for Arch Labs? Who are you trying to target? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> difficult. We were discussing a, a few months ago again what's the target group? Like you said, uh, Rob, the open box is. It's, it's, it's an acquired taste. You have to learn, you have to invest some time in it. And then everything makes sense. Uh, and I say, okay, that's how this thing works. It looks completely different. It works a bit different. But with the menu and all the tutorials we have and all the links and the com keys we have, we try to make it easier and easier and easier for the new user. That's main goal, first of all. But, um, now I forgot what I want to tell. <laughs> <laughs> well, is OpenBox, do you feel that OpenBox is uh, or could be for a new user? Yeah, the target uh, group. Well, we have been having more and more new people coming over and asking the, 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 the first newbie question you could ever ask, you know? And okay, fine, great, welcome. So no problem there. But um, the idea was, of course, yeah, to make it a little bit more intermediate or more advanced Linux user. But why put names on it? That's one. Why put names on it? I don't put names on my student. You're lesser than the other one and so on. We right. can all evolve to a certain level. And that's why, it, why the tutorials are there, to get acquainted with this system, to teach you, so, okay, yeah, you can do this. Oh, that's nice. I want I want to have that too. And then I have this movie and I follow the movie and I said, and in the meantime, they get acquainted with the system and not not as such arch labs, but Linux in general. So that, not a specific target group. Everybody comes. And mostly when I read Facebook and Google Plus, mostly because, well, first of all, you say it, it's fast. CPU time. Is uh, no no CPU usage, al almost none. RAM is low, and also because it looks nice. We have a wonderful Google Plus community which uh, makes screenshots that say that I say, did they make that with Arch Labs? That I have to click and zoom in and say, oh yeah, it's Arch Labs. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> then it's amazing, <coughs> and that's what yeah. I like about it. It's so versatile so creative and that's also one of our goals provide tools to be creative icons themes and then go ahead have fun I always end with that in the movies have fun so you want everybody to use it <laughs> advanced users yep. intermediate and new users sure sure why not I, I like the way you put it you don't you don't want to put labels on it and I appreciate that because it's a discovery process. And for some yeah. people, they want to, that's something they enjoy doing. Yeah. Uh, whether they're new at it or not, for them, that's a discovery process. They enjoy the experience of that and then the process of, of learning. And so to label it and say, no, this is not for you, I think I think that's a good way to approach it, really, Eric. Um, Thank you. Yeah. So one of the questions, too, that I had was that um, <clears throat> with OpenBox, you've got a combination of things going on there that's out of the standard or normal desktop 
user experience. Like you said, you don't have the menu button or you, you know, naturally your eye goes to one of the corners to say, hey, where's the menu button? Mm -hmm. And you don't see that. Do you think that's part of the appeal for a lot of people, again, going back to the discovery process in that, hey, wait a minute, this is really different. <clears throat> you know, as distro hoppers and Rocco and I, <clears throat> excuse me, chat about this all the time, as yeah. distro hoppers, we're kind of looking at a lot of little details and things as we go in and mess around with different desktop environments. But for the most part, you get the same basics. You get a menu, you know, you get a panel or sometimes a combination of panels. You get a dock. And <clears throat> if you watch my video there, I just kind of did a video saying, hey, I'm learning open box here and just kind of shared my video with it. <laughs> and um, and I felt I said I felt really geeky. Uh -huh. And that, that was a compliment, Eric, because yeah, what yeah, I yeah. meant by that was I'm, I'm going through some geeky stages here, learning some stuff, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. do you think that's a big part of the appeal or are you getting that so kind of too. feedback? Yeah, I think so okay. too. It's, it's, it's a bit of a mystery for yeah. most of them. Yeah. And, and that's appealing to figure out how things work. It's maybe something, uh, you know, all people have. So how does it tick, you know, how does it work? Yeah, it's uh, maybe appealing as well. All right, so you not only create Arch Labs, but you are also into other things, like the <laughs> Sardi Icon project. Oh, yeah. How did I get into that already? <laughs> yeah, how did you get into an Icon project? <clears throat> well, I've I've been looking. I've, I've been, I'm prepared. And I looked and found a post from 2014, 18 December. <laughs> wow. And that was... Cotus works. So all my compliments to the creator of the original Ardis Icon team. Remember it? The Ardis Icon team? Yep. So anyway, this guy says uh, to me, okay, or to me, to, to Google Plus, you know, um, I'm stopping. I have other priorities and um, it was an awesome time. And here are my icons. Voila. Last, wow. I will not do anything about it. It's it's finished. I'll, I'll let it be there, but uh, I'm done. Then, uh, I don't know, I think two, three months after his announcement, I um, made contact with this guy and said, look, uh, what do you say if I worked on, on your icons? And I got feedback like, okay, um, I use this dimension and that shadow and that's how I do it and everything should be that's my rule you know the the templates on how do I make an icon so okay um, started with Inkscape uh, for my also my well not my first time but well <laughs> very first uh, attempt in, to work with Inkscape and icons and all that SVGs you know and I loved it because viewers SVG it's a text file. It's a text file. There is an hexadecimal code in there somewhere that says painted blue. And if you say then, okay, let's with a little script, the script is included, change it to red, and it's red, and all the 3000 icons are red in five seconds <laughs> time. So I had a vision. Well, it didn't start up like that. It started with um, first uh, cleaning up um, the code because there was a lot of code inside that that was um, yeah leftovers let's let's call it like that so a lot of cleanup to do and then if you check out the Sardi icons um, there's a lot of icons already available just 17 18 I don't know a lot of them and they grew eventually from Ardis which if you change the letters Sardi? Ah. Ardis? Yep. Ah, hey. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, I put some thought in it. <laughs> anyway, I had these icons and they were all nice and colorful. And I said, wow, wouldn't it be nice if they were all monochrome? Yeah. All grayish. Right. Yep. And that's how it evolved. And then I started learning more and more and then started scripting. I love scripting. You know, if you see my GitHub, 77 GitHub or so, I don't know, all scripting. It's so nice to let Linux work for you. I say, yeah. run. <laughs> <laughs> Five <laughs> seconds later, 3,000 icons are changed. Beautiful. So um, I've, I've, um, I continue to have ideas and that's my, my problem. 
The problem is that my head works very fast. Like, what if? I have a lot of what ifs. What if I take the new mix circle icon and put them together with those folders? What if I change that color into that color? How would that look? Because I get a wallpaper in it says, no, nah, it doesn't look good. With this wallpaper, I should have other should have other icons. And I'm capable because of all these scripts to make them. And that's how things, yeah, come to me with the what ifs. Well, I, for one, have been a huge fan before I even knew that you were involved uh, with the Sardi Icon set. Huge fan of that because I was, I'm going to plug, plug the channel here, Rocco. I was Do on it. a quest. I was on a quest. Oh to, <laughs> You're on an find, icon quest. <laughs> icon quest. Hey, there's an idea. No, I was on a quest to find icons that weren't flat, but still very high quality. Because as you've seen, Eric, I'm sure there's a trend for everything to be flat, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so the Sardi icon set was perfect for that because they were very bright, vivid colors. And when you applied that, especially in KDE, well, really with any desktop, but I noticed it, especially within KDE, it just applied everywhere as it should so nicely. And it's because it's such a large pack of icons. I mean, how many are there? Over 3000. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's a lot of work, man. <laughs> yep. I have five more to do after the interview. <laughs> 3,005. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. I've been... Um, <clears throat> we could check my website here. Uh, Sardi, blah, blah, blah. Sardi visited under there. Actually, I visited now 62 distros. Wow. wow. That means USB... ISO, SSD, install it. And so, well, in a sense, I'm an, an, the most experienced distro hopper there is. <laughs> so you're a member of DHA. <laughs> I have to install to, to, to check out are the Sardi icons. And in the meantime, are the surfing icons in order? Because you won't see anything on my website about the surfing icons. But I just take them along, you know? Okay. It's my testing match. That's a testing battery icons. So how do you go about with the extra icons, like the software that you install? Um, how do you go about finding all of them? I mean, is it by going in and looking at each distro, or do you search a software center, or how do you go about finding the extra ones that you might need? Ah, making icons. Well, there are different uh, possibilities. First of all, I try to be true to a logo that exists. I find it important that people just recognize on the image, okay, this is Spotify because it has these waves. Eh? Yep. There are some things you can't change. You can't say, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be creative. I'm going to make a totally different icon. It has it's to be recognizable. Done. Voila, it has, it's not done. That's one. Um, then you can indeed Google and find possibilities, examples, and say, okay, this looks nice, that looks nice. Um, you can change the icons you have because an SVG is actually a lines you can just manipulate. So there you go. But it has to be, well, I have now to make six icons. It has to be over the six, what I call core icons. I have the Sardi icons, the mono, the flexible, the ghost, which is all white. The flat, eh? flat, you know, yep, voila, right. there, there you go. And then the last one, I was so stupid to make another one because I had a bright idea to make a Sardi orb color, which, which has a circle, but a, and then a circle inside it. Well, you can just check it out. Oh, but yeah. A sixth one, you know, yep. to maintain <laughs> overall. Okay. Well, I, for one, appreciate the, all the effort you put into it because... There's nothing more frustrating than to get a really good icon set and then open your menu and half of the icons ain't there. <laughs> that, well, that's painful. that is so yeah. frustrating. Yeah. True. You know, people people remark uh, and have remarked to both Rocco and I about, you know, you know, the icons and the wallpaper and the theming doesn't make doesn't make an OS. Okay, and that's true, right? 
you can have a terrific operating system that's just plain ugly, uh, you know, but it matters if you're into it, right? Uh, of course. And just as Rocco pointed out, uh, you, you launch your menu and then all of a sudden half the icons or a quarter of the icons aren't uh, matching the rest of the icon set. And uh, that's that's just wrong. That's just not right at all. You know, <laughs> or they ain't even there. That's wrong. <laughs> yeah, or yeah. they're not even there. And yeah. so it does matter, I think. And then we get the other side of the spectrum where uh, many many people out there who have an eye for things that are designed, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're going to pick it out and they're going to pick it to pieces. And yeah. I'm sure you hear from some of those people that hey, the tent of orange in this icon is not exactly matching to the <laughs> well actually no not that kind of questions no uh, or inputs no, that's okay there are other things people say right but not about the colors of orange. <laughs> but your work is appreciated there because again um, i will say that when you apply the sardi icon set my experience has been it applies throughout throughout the system and i've i can't even recall a missing icon the only thing why is the folder why is the folder shortcut always the shape of the folder folder shortcut well yeah so like if put, put it on github <laughs> <laughs> okay you got it you got it an issue <laughs> you got it well i think uh Sardi has uh, been covered that was uh 14 days of Christmas. That was my holiday. Oh my! <laughs> wow! Wow! Cleaning up, yeah, uh, cleaning up Saturday, making Saturday. If I look at my my website here again, uh, what I did was was clean it up. Eh? There are some objectives I want to do. Saturday is distro independent. Has to be lean and clean, flexible. The scripts, change the color. So. A lot of codes again after all the cleaning from Ardis. Um, I learned that you can clean the SVGs so they become smaller. You can get rid of a lot of code and still have the icon. It's strange ah, what it is. Wow. Ah. So I have this picture here. What is does it say? I went from 27.8 megabytes to 17.2. Ah, wow. So 10 megabytes or so less and still have the same icons. I think I have even one more, the Sardi or Colora. So just to say it never ends. You can still <laughs> reinvent yourself after two years of uh, Sardi. I say, hmm, I can rewrite my code and still have the same icons. So cleanup has been done. So I think we're safe there. That's OK. I know now I have to save in a proper way. Uh, so that the code stays clean. And then there's now Arch Labs. So um, the main thing is, is making Arch Labs or T2, T2 so 5.0, uh, but we'll just all, uh, we call it R2D2. So making that work, uh, i3 is, is, yeah, awesome. Eh? I mean, it has the, the basis of Arch. It has the stability of i3 gaps which makes it nice what is gaps is between that you have when you tile the windows you can see through you see the wallpaper so i am a kind of design kind of guys I, I make wordpress websites i teach wordpress advanced courses so i have an eye for theming and colors and all that so really covering all my desktop and not seeing my wallpaper Ugh. yeah <laughs> <That's> for me <laughs> exactly well, let me ask you too. Uh, with Arch Labs, did you were you surprised or uh, taken back by the response? We because I noticed just I noticed just in posting a video of me finding my way around, the response was fast, and there were a lot of people who were just <laughs> praising, and uh, it really surprised me. It, it surprises me too. I was joking to the others the other day. Let's have a look now. I've made two tutorials about i3 and I, says, I say behind it only for beta testers. So for our guys, 122 people watched it. 
I don't think we have 102 beta testers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the other one is 266 now. Meaning, yeah, people are interested to, to follow up. And we are astonished because we are now at 15,000 downloads wow. on SourceForge. And uh, yeah, well, no words. So thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that's it that's fantastic. Been amazing, right? It's has been an amazing ride. And it me, I, I I wanted to to say this on YouTube. It has been an emotional roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's all of our that's our show. That's every yeah. episode of Destination Linux. Yes, an emotional roller coaster. Yeah. <laughs> so where can people reach you? All over the net. <laughs> All over. Well, you got your yeah, YouTube you, channel, but you have websites, it's, it's, right? Uh, well, everybody contacts me from Indonesia to Canada. It's it's crazy. Facebook, uh, Google Plus, uh, the forum. So you can uh, visit our websites. Uh, well, uh, all the links are there to contact us. So I don't think that's an issue. <laughs> all right. All right, Eric. Well, we appreciate okay. you stopping by. And uh, okay. we will put all the links to uh, Arch Labs and even Sardi uh, and the GitHub page, Google Plus, all of them in the show notes so that people can visit you. 20, and 20 lines. Hey, 20 lines at least. <laughs> there's plenty of room in the show notes. So we got a script. We got a script where we can. No, I'm just kidding. Eric, can you Great write response. us a script Great response. for show notes? Great comeback. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks right. a lot, Eric. Thank you, okay. man. Okay. Cheers. Bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of Destination Linux Podcast.